Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. Big hello to all my subscribers and for those of you that haven't subscribed yet, why not do it now and join us for some more endodontic fun. In this video presentation, we're going to be looking at post removal. That's simple techniques for removing posts during root canal retreatment, for instance, or when perhaps a post is completely fractured and you need to remove that fragment from the root canal. I'll show you some techniques using ultrasound that are predictable and reliable. I hope you enjoy it. Here we have a classic situation where a cast post needs to be removed from the maxillary central incisor. The key really to getting these posts out is to undermine them if at all possible and then use a piezoelectric ultrasonic to vibrate the post, break up the cement and loosen it. I've cut a notch in the buckle aspect of the core and I'm now using an ultrasonic tip with water spray to vibrate the post. You must use water spray because it will get very hot. After a few seconds I realised that the cast post wasn't budging and so I cut a second notch at the level of the dentine and I'm now vibrating at this point. You can see the cement gradually bubbling and this is a sure sign that the post is about to be retrieved. Applying ultrasound to the palatal aspect of the core finally retrieves the post. If the post doesn't move at all after about 10 minutes, then it's probably best to cut back the core material and use a post puller instead. Another great example here of a post crown in a maxillary right central incisor. The preoperative radiograph shows a periapical abscess, a poorly condensed root filling and the post tip is below osseous level. This is not ideal. In this case I sectioned the crown and removed it in order to uncover the core material. Here I'm using a long tapered diamond burr to remove metal so that I undermine the cast restoration. In this case I'm vibrating the cast post and core with a Startex 4 ultrasonic tip using water spray and high power on the piezoelectric ultrasonic unit. There was no movement of the cast post and core after about 40 seconds and so I'm now going to undermine the core a little bit more with a jet beaver burr. Application of the Startex 4 ultrasonic tip proves successful and the post core is removed. Mm -hmm. 
In this case, I went on to re-treat the tooth, removing the original root filling with the 30 Headstrom file. Here I'm gauging the size of the post hole for the placement of a fibre post. The root canal space was irrigated with 3% sodium hypochlorite agitated with an irisafe tip. After drying the root canal with sterile paper points, I placed a collagen matrix at the apex and then backfilled with Obtura GP. Here we're looking down the post hole before the placement of a fibre post. In this case the tooth was then restored with an acrylic temporary restoration. The preoptive radiograph with periopical radiolucency and poorly condensed root filling and the completed final result with a much better apical coronal seal. We're now looking at a reliable and predictable technique for removing fractured metal posts. Here is a typical case and in this situation we have to do three things. The first thing is to make enough space but conservatively so that we can then apply ultrasound. We need to apply the ultrasound to the lateral aspect of the fractured post. We can then retrieve the post if it's not removed with ultrasound. In this case I'm going to use a StarTex 3 tip and the Maserantrafine. Here I'm removing excess cement from the head of the post. With cylindrical posts, a macerantrophine is a very conservative way of removing a little bit of cement and dentine from around the head so that you can then apply ultrasound to the lateral aspect. Using the StarTex 3 tip with water spray, I'm now applying vibration to the lateral aspect of the post and you'll see that the cement starts to break up and the post loosens.
In this case, the post was retrieved with the smaller Maserantrophin. In this case, the maxillary right second premolar has a fractured post in it, and we're going to remove it using exactly the same technique. I've used a split dam technique to isolate the tooth, and now I'm going in with the StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip to remove excess cement. In the final part of this video, we're going to remove a post through an existing restoration, in this case a metal ceramic crown. You can see the post in the distal canal, and there's a periapical radiolucency at the apex of the mesial root. I don't often show you this, but this is my rapid rubber dam placement technique in which you can get a rubber dam on the tooth and fully isolated in a matter of seconds. I've cut an access cavity with a long tapered diamond burr and uncovered the head of the post that I need to remove. In this case I'm going to use a StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip with water spray to remove core material from around the head of the post. Applying ultrasound to the lateral aspect of the post and working around it, I can unscrew it and here you can see it loosening nicely.
Having removed the post and the gutter perker from the root canals with the Gates Glidden Burr, I then went on to re-treat the tooth. In this case, I'm flaring the coronal aspect of the mesial canals using a ProTaper SX instrument. Working lengths were all confirmed with an electronic apex locator and a size 10 flexor file. These were then rapidly tapered with a small Wave 1 gold instrument. The case was irrigated with 3% sodium hypochlorite and 17% EDTA. The hypochlorite solution was agitated with an ultrasonic irisafe tip. The case was obturated with a vertically compacted gutta perca technique. I then bonded a fibre post back in the distal canal and restored the access cavity with light cured composite. Here we're looking down the distal canal with the post hole prior to placement of the fibre post. Here's the final composite restoration in the access, bonded in place using a porcelain repair kit. So to recap, here's the preoperative radiograph with the post in the distal canal and periapical radiolucency on the mesial root, and the final result with good apical coronal seal and a fibre post in the distal root. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's much more coming up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and above all, enjoy your endo.